and welcome to Model Kit Stuff and Battle of the 132s Part 2 The Tamiya Corsair First thing we can see is the box is much bigger than the Edward kit box So as we have a look at the front of the box we have a really nice painting there of the Corsair nice happy pilot with a tropical background to give you a, a feeling of it operating in the Pacific we have a little sticker on the box that says export version only clear engine cowling parts included and then as we go down it tells you that it includes B5 size 12 page full colour reference manual with images. And then we have 132 aircraft series number 25 gives you the dimensions of the aircraft. So this is information that wasn't on the Edward kit. So you've got an understanding of how big this is, will it fit on the shelf, so on and so forth. Okay, so it gives you a little bit of detail there and a, a nice pitch and I have to say the box is nicely presented um, with you've got this shiny silver here that's actually inlaid into the box so the box has a more quality feel than the um, Edward box. If we go and have a look at the side we get the same picture again on that side and the same on that side and then as we drop down here, we can see we've got wings up, wings fixed, view of the aircraft. And on this side, we have some photographs of the actual model. And some of the contents. Just because the box is bigger doesn't mean it's any less rammed. The box is absolutely um, the right size for the volume of parts contained inside. Lots and lots and lots of plastic. So let's take a look at the kit parts first. So the first bag out of the box, you get a little bag that has a couple of um, metal rods and just having a look yeah they're solid um, a poly cap a nut and a uh, bolt a screwdriver so that you can do the nut and bolt without having to have your own tools and some um, rubber tires which look quite nice. They have a little bit of a centre seam. Um, whether they'll look weighted when when used, possible. Um, so the first thing you notice straight away is that Tammy is thinking about the model builder and saying to itself, well, you know, they might not have a screwdriver with the right size head, so we'll give them one. So just like the Edward kit that we saw in part one every single sprue is in a separate bag um, which means you can take the sprue out put the sprue back in and there's enough bag there to fold it over and keep your part protected and from dropping out um, whilst you're doing your build so you know there's going to be no scratch damage to the surface so let's have a look at the first sprue out of the box which is clearly marked sprue A, much easier to find that than on the Edward one. Um, and we've got a fairly big sheet of parts there. Um, and what we can immediately see is a lot more surface detail than we had on the Edward kit. Individual small panels there. The, Te texture of the surface is much finer 
um, and though you can feel all the raised detail um, and the ribs flip that over and wow look at all that interior detail and an awful lot of injector pin marks so whether this interior detail will be seen I don't know that remains to be seen um, guess we'll get a view as we go through the instructions this looks like it could be the folded up version of the wings lots of nice detail but an awful lot of clean up there if you're going to be showing some of this so unlike the Edward kit all of these bags are stapled down so you know that the sprues have not travelled in transit and come out of the bags and mixed with each other and got damaged um, so it's just a slightly elevated attention to detail from Tamiya so this next sprue here um, you can see that the part count is much higher than we've got in the Edward kit um, so we've got Dashboard there, bulkhead, looks like fuel tanks there, all with lots and lots of lovely rivet detail there. I mean, it's quite exquisite. Some very fine parts. So we flip that over. We have detail on both sides, and if you remember on Edward, it was detailed on one surface, blank on the other. This has got lots of nice detail. And I know we're not comparing um, the same kit, um, but it's to give you a view of the differences between the brands. Yeah, that is really nice. So next we have um, components for the radial engine. Um, this is two sprues connected together, H and J. Um, and what we can see here is rather than having the individual um, pistons like on the Edward kit, they're all being joined together on the ring. And it looks like there's two sets of rings there. Then we've got the exhaust pipe work there, um, the, the wiring cage there at the front. Um, lots and lots of nice detail on there. Um, and the kit doesn't feel too oily. If you remember the Edward kit had quite a lot of release agent on, this one doesn't feel too bad. So our next sprue, which is sprue N, again has a big part count. We have the ends there for the wings. So if they're folded up, you can see they're folded up. And the, the mould detail is so fine on that really fine lots of tiny individual parts so the arrestor hooks there for the for the wings these all look like mainly wing parts so you know that when you build this up it's going to look very intricate because of the number of fine parts um, and that looks like that goes into the wing there very nice indeed next we have sprue M and there's so many parts here it's difficult to actually know what what some of them are um, if you think about the Edward kit when we were looking at that the, the comment I made was you were getting exactly what you got in a 148 scale kit just scaled up to 132 you're absolutely not getting that with this Tamiya kit. What you're getting is something that's been um, designed to be this scale and they've gone, well, what can we, now we've got it to this scale, what level of detail can we put in? And boy, they have thought about detail. So the parts are lovely. Um, everything is nice and crisply molded, no flash haven't seen any sync there are a lot of ejector pin marks about um, on uh, what I'm guessing is inside surfaces 
but because they've put rivet detail on and, and other details I imagine these will be seen so in terms of the build process much more work not just because of the high part count but because you've probably got more clean up um, just necessitated by the fact that there's a greater level of detail and you, you have to have ejector pins to get the thing out of the mould but yeah some really lovely detail there So next sprue is B and that has the two um, large fuselage halves and you can see here actually the, the aircraft, less its engine, is not that much difference in size to the, the Edward. Um, it will be longer um, when ultimately built up. Um, what is noticeable though is that it's not really recognisable as a fuselage half that, to what aircraft it is the tail sections are completely missing, it's got funny shapes where there's bits to be added in. Um, the detail level again is exceptional. you probably got every single um, rivet in the right place on there and it is very very fine. So fine that if you painted this with a paintbrush and not an airbrush you'd probably lose a lot of this detail. Um, and then we've got more very fine detail, continuation of a high parts count. So quite often with Tammy kits you recommend them to people starting out in the hobby because they have a reputation for great fit. Um, in this instance what Tammy have also done is thought about um, the more experienced modeler who, um, who is looking at buying something that has um, more um, construction and therefore is more challenging so this is more challenging just because of the, the amount of, of parts what you won't get a challenge from is the fit you know the fit will be good um, so lots of interior detail even in areas that you know that it's going to you're not going to see it there's the the ribs there in the tail but it just gives you this nice comfy warm feeling that um, Tamiya looked at every square inch of this in detail and nothing was left unturned and nothing was left unconsidered. So our next sprue is sprue C uh, and this seems to deal with um, tail assembly in the main. So lot, as with the rest of the kit lots and lots of fine detail, very nicely moulded crisp parts, there's no sink here even though there's lots of detail on the underside, I'm not coming across any any sink issues whatsoever. So next is sprue G, which has um, engine cowlings, parts for the prop there. So again, little individual parts, which is going to give you options in the build, I have no doubt. So our next sprue out is a single part and just look at the complexity of that. This forms the underside of the forward part of the fuselage with the wing roots. So you're not going to have wing root gaps like you, you normally would when building an aircraft. And again the level of detail in terms of rivets is outstanding. They've really, really tried to capture the real thing in detail. So, and, and it's not just that they've they've got lots of rivets on it. They've got different size bolt heads in all the different places. Very gentle recessed lines. It it just feels right, and that's Tamiya. Sprue F is looking at primarily the undercarriage we can see here. Now if we just cast our mind back to the Edward kit, the undercarriage consisted of a strut and uh, a bit of fuselage that went on the, that you stuck it onto and that was pretty much it. Um, unless you got the aftermarket um, etch which then replaced those kit parts but you still ended up with 
effectively a strut on a little bit of fuselage. And look at this. We've got brake cables. Lots and lots of parts. Some of these are bulkheads for inside the fuselage. And I'm guessing that is for the rear, uh, for the tailwheel. And there's the wheel there in two halves. A rest a hook. But as with this kit throughout, lots and lots of very finely moulded detail. Excellent engineering and clearly aimed at someone who wants uh, a model building challenge. Sprue D focuses on the cockpit. Um, we've got a bulkhead there, another bulkhead. Uh, we've got controls, um, a seat which is made up of multiple parts, various different controls. Again, lots of tiny little details. Housing. So next is sprue K and there's two of these in the same bag. Um, so we've got um, tail parts here. The hubs for the um, wheels to go inside those lovely rubber tyres. And we've got individual prop blades. Unfortunately with the connection nubs on the blade. But they're very, very finely moulded, very thin. Some more engine components there. And some really tiny details. Some of those parts would be a challenge to actually take off and clean up. So Sprue T has um, bombs and another dashboard face. Some more engine components. Uh, and what looks like a drop tank, fuel, extra fuel tank. There's detail on the back of some of the parts, but not others. Sprue Z has figures. So we have um, a pilot stood up or a pilot sat down. Um, there was no pilot included in the Edward. So if you wanted to show the Edward uh, aircraft in flight you've got to source your own pilot um, and when you consider that you could have up to four figures in there um, you, you might be sourcing four different figures on top um, so Tamiya have thought about that and you can model it in flight with the figure or landed with the figure stood next to it about to get in or just getting out um, what I'd say about the figures are um, they are nicely done for plastic figures. Um, the pilot has his mask on um, when he's in the set down position. And um, even though you won't see his back, there is nice detail there. Um, but obviously um, a resin figure would have uh, a more enhanced so have the transparencies, the clear parts. Um, again... Just like the Edward ones, these are really very, very clear, crystal clear. I think the Edward ones were perhaps slightly clearer. Um, but what you get is you get part of the um, fuselage on there. So you're painting up to a line and you've not got the clear plastic forming a joint that you've then got to try and fill, which can cause all sorts of issues against the, the glazed area. So Tamiya have thought about that um, and, and that's a really good um, feature that's becoming more common in kits. We've also got two dashboard um, dial transparencies. So no doubt you put a decal behind that and then the dashboard over the top and you've got something that looks quite good. And then there's lots and lots of individual small transparencies much higher transparency count than the Edward kit. Um, 
So yeah, little little lights. You've got the goggles there for the pilot. Um, so no stone unturned um, yet again um, from Tamiya. Next is Sprue S, which is clearly a black plastic stand. Um, so there was no stand included with the Edward. So if you wanted it um, in flying uh, mode with the wheels up, not only do you have to source a pilot, you also have to come up with your own arrangement for displaying it on a stand. Whereas Edward of um, sorry uh, Tamiya have come up with a stand for the kit, so you've got the option. I think that's a really nice touch. Now the last bag of plastic parts. Um, you may or may not have in this particular kit depending on whether you've got the export version. So there was a little sticker on the box that said export version only has clear engine parts. Um, and basically it's um, a copy of um, Sprue G but in clear plastic. So what you get is the same parts casted clear but some of them are um, like frosted um, I guess the idea is so you can see detail inside so it'd be interesting when we build that up to see whether that is something we want to do or not I mean it has things like the front of the spinner clear so you can see ejector pin marks through them so uh, yeah need to think about whether we'd use that or not but it's a nice little idea uh, you might argue it's a bit gimmicky, um, but at the same time, you, you, I can see why they do that. Um, it's just another option for display. So that might be it for the plastic parts, but it's not it for the part count. Just like Edward, they have included some uh, photo etch. So the Edward set had one to etch fret which mainly dealt with the dashboard and interior details Tamiya have one fret that um, appears to deal with things like fine brackets that they couldn't replicate in plastic um, and the seat belts they will need annealing because this is um, steel um, but yeah, some very fine detail there. Um, and then they have a second sprue or fret, which deals with things like engine mesh vents that they couldn't possibly do in plastic. Um, they might be able to do the texture on a solid, but this make, means you can see through them and they look more authentic. Um, not quite sure what some of these other parts are, but yeah um, so they've thought about what can't we do in plastic and therefore have to do in it um, but this gives you again another level of completeness if you're using the pilot you can you can put the seat belts over him um, if you're not using the pilot you can arrange them on the seat so you don't you don't have to buy any aftermarket stuff which you might have to do with some kits so they've thought about what extra you want in your 132 scale kit. So next we have decals and masks. So if you remember in the Edward kit we had um, quite a lot of options for markings. Um, so as I have a look at these we've got two sheets. Um, one has all the markings that you might need for the variants included and we'll see that when we look at the instructions um, the decals actually look a little bit more chunky than the Edward ones were but I didn't get those out of the bag so I can't 100% confirm that um, and there is quite a bit of carrier film in between some of them um, but you've got all the basic markings there that, that you will need um, bits punched out where you need as well so you're not having to do that yourself and then you've got a second one which has lots and lots of signs and markings 
the um, stickers that go on the prop. You've got the decals for the um, dashboard, um, the anti-slip bits and various other markings. And there's lots of markings here that weren't included in the Edouard kit in terms of warning signs and, and so on that you would see around an aircraft. So um, again, the, the decals are, have just gone um, just gone up that level um, in terms of the level of, of detail included. So if we put those to one side. Just like with um, Edward, you've got a set of masks. Just have a look at them. Easier to see these. So these aren't die cut, so you have to cut those out yourself. Um, and just like Edward, they are exterior only. Um, the fact that you have to cut those out yourself, particularly that little round one, is problematic. So Edward having the die cut ones probably take the edge there on that particular element. And then we have uh, a couple of stickers for your display stand. And then finally we have the instructions. So uh, we have a little booklet here which has a bit of history about the aircraft. Which has some nice pictures and then you have um, some more technical information, versions of the aircraft. Tells you what some of these things are, cow flap, main fuel tank cover. Um, so gives you a little bit of an education. Um, and then there are some photographs of the real thing. Explains how the um, undercarriage works. More pictures of the real thing, some really nice close-up interior um, photographs which will give you some idea of weathering ideas there, that's the pedals there, and the joystick. So they're giving you plenty of reference material which isn't something Edouard did at all. Edward um, just focused on what you need to know to actually build the kit. Um, Tammy have gone, what do you need to know if you want to weather the kit and, and what that looks like and just check um, not just where things go but what they look like in real life in terms of, well I know it's black but it, how, how matte is it, where, where does it wear and that sort of stuff. So they've really thought about what the modeler may want to do with it. Um, so the paint options, well there's more inside I don't know but they have this big fold out um, sheet here for the paint options. Um, you can see colours are shouted out here, naturally they've used the Tamiya paint colours. Um, and they've shown you where to put the decals as well. So that's a, a, a nice glossy overview um, and it, it's larger scale, however um, it doesn't give you anything more than what Edward were giving you, in fairness. The instruction manual is um, a landscape format, I know it's not, it's, it's portrait, um, but the front cover is certainly landscape, uh, black and white stapled um, booklet. On the front you've got the picturation um, of the box art. And then on the back, we've got information like um, aftermarket service cards, um, how to apply your decals, painting instructions. So if we go over, we've got a history in Japanese and then in English. 
for information, technical data, height, weight, length, so on. Important information, tools that you may need for doing this, referencing, of course, the Tamiya tools. Then more information about painting, and then the shout out of the paints again, all the Tamiya colours. I mean, we're on page six here, and we're still on information for building it rather than the first step. Um, you've got some uh, information here. It says read before um, read before assembly. So um, information on how to cut out the etch, information about glue, more information about liquid poly, how to remove and clean up your parts. Um, even has some tips here, like labelling your sprues to make them easier to find, bending your photo etch, drilling out, primers, paints, clear coats, how to apply your paint masks. Um, in fairness to Edouard, they have a full page on that, whereas it's just a strip here with, uh, with Tamiya. Um, then it talks about your marking options. So we've got three options. So that's about half as many as you got with, with Edward. Um, talks about your icons through the kit instructions. So when you see these, this is what you need to do. Um, and then general painting instructions. And we're on page eight before the build starts. So there's a lot more introductory information. They've really taken the modeler through everything. So if you've never built a model before, you could pick this up. You've got the screwdriver in that you need. You've got all the information that you need on what tools to have, what glues to have, um, how to go about doing it. Um, everything you can think of is self-contained. So you can walk into this kit, have a never built a model kit before and contained inside the boxes everything you need to take it from start to finish having never built a model before um, which is you know real attention to detail um, what happens just like in the edward the edward instructions were color if you remember and they shouted out um, their paint references as as they went and tamir have done exactly the same um, you've got paint references in minute detail all the way through. Assembly starts with the cockpit. All the colours. Then we've got the photo etch construction showing you that, showing you where to do the bends um, and the sequence for putting it in. So the instructions are more detailed as in that they're much more in depth showing you there the um, dashboard assembly then building up the seat and putting the, the belts on the seat more cockpit if you're putting the pilot in how to put the um, belts on the pilot more assembly of the cockpit then you've got some the interior detail for the tail there with the bulkheads. More interior detail ahead of, which are sub-assemblies ahead of going into the fuselage. More fuselage interiors, bringing the fuselage together. The cockpit goes in at that time, which is the classic way of doing it. Um, then you've got the engine bulkhead, um, including some of the exhaust pipe work. Cowling options, building of the engine, which is very detailed. Um, radial engine, it's a double radial engine, just like in the, the Hellcat. Takes you through that step by step. All the paint shout outs, even the tips. They don't, they don't skimp. They show you in detail what part is a different colour to what, so that you can get it absolutely bang on right. Little 
conversations and tips as you go, which isn't something in the Edward uh, instructions. That was just pictures of how to do it. Assembly of the engine and attaching it. Tail assembly. Then you've got um, tail wing assembly. I mean, look how complex that is. It's not stick the wheel on that and shove it on. It's quite complex with the and builds up into well, I guess different types. It's shouting out A, B, and C. So you've got an arrestor hook version, a non-arrestor hook version. Then it says here extended wings. So the instructions at this point will go into two different areas. You can do follow this set of instructions for extended wings or a different set for folded wings. So if we look at extended wings, we see that complex lower hull part and we're building up all the parts there, shouting out photo etch, the um, wing spar frame, which all looks authentic. You can see where the hinges would be for folding the wings. Even though this is going to be locked in place and you won't see it, it adds strength to the wing. Lots and lots of detail. So for people that want a challenging build, they've thought about that. How do we go about putting that together? The build continues until you put that lower fuselage half uh, the, into the upper fuselage half with the wing roots already attached. Then we have the undercarriage construction. Wheels pulling together, brake lines, general assembly. So a whole page just on the wheels. Then inserting the wheels, the flaps. I mean, the flaps have inner and outer sections, so there's no detail missed at all. And it tells you what the parts are as you build it up. So. If, like me, you don't know a lot about aeroplanes, you can learn as you go. You have specific instructions for the wing flaps being up. Takes you through building that. Highlights areas where you need to um, understand how it goes together. So they blow up little bits. Again, it's all attention to detail. And... A high part count. We've got canopy construction and we, we, we had um, in the in the Edward set we had details like the mirrors but mirrors here is, is photo etch and it shows you how to bend it and where to place it um, rather than just saying bend this part then we've got the wing tips construction. Options there if you're having it up. It's very clear, you can't make a mistake. It tells you very clearly not what bits not to glue. Continuing the wing tip construction and the flap construction, and then the flaps being put into place. Going on to the tail. Final canopy and tail assembly, um, the aerial uh, stands there, building the prop together, putting that on um, with an option for the cowlings to go on, but you could, you could have those off so you can see the engine, which again isn't something um, that the Edward kit would do unless you wanted to butcher it yourself. Then they go through that process again, folded wings. So it's very, very clear. You can't make a mistake because you're making that decision and then following the instructions clearly. So there will be some repetition in there based on the fact that you want the, the wings up. It's showing you construction that you would have already done. So they've gone the extra mile to make it clear.
and you end up at the same point. Then you've got the drop tank, bomb, painting instructions for the pilots. Then you've got the clear instructions for the stand, how to assemble it, screwing it in place, uh, option of whether you want the silver or the black uh, nameplate. Then at the back we've got a parts list. which includes the um, poly cap and screwdriver and, and the, uh, doesn't show the photo etch, does it? Or does it? Uh, yeah, photo etch was at the start, beg your pardon. And then we have um, decal placement. all the way through nice and clear then we have markings and paintings which includes the decals specific for those markings so um, US Navy uh, Solomon Islands 1943 so just like Edward gives you a location then you've got uh, Marine Corps Valla La Valla Islands, December 43, written upside down, so if I've mispronounced that, forgive me. Um, so yeah, you've only really got... Oh, um, New Georgia Islands, 1943. So you've got, you've got three paint options there, but black and white, not colour. Um, and that's the instructions done. So the one thing I mentioned a lot in the Edward kit that I've not mentioned um, at all while well, we've looked at the Tamiya kit is the price. So it's quite clear that Tamiya have looked at this and, and this is a 2014 kit and they've said let's go at accomplished model builders that want a challenging build so a high part count lots of detail ending up with an outstanding model that's going to take quite a bit of time to build they've put a lot of thought into how the part parts should go together they've put a lot of engineering into making sure it fits and making sure that every rivet is accounted for um, they've put they've gone the extra mile in terms of detail of photographic uh, imagery to help you with your your finish They've put a lot of effort into the instructions and what you need to build the kit. Um, they've thought about whether you want to be able to see inside the engine. They've thought about whether you want to have it flying and therefore it needs to be on a stand and it needs to have a pilot. Um, so they, they have gone from start to finish, no stone unturned, and giving you what they think is... Um, a kit that does what that sort of modeler needs. The result of that is the price tag is a little bit higher than the Edward one. So if you remember, we could pick up the Edward kit um, for around about 22, 23 pounds plus shipping. This is gonna cost you around about 130 pounds plus shipping. Um, so it's a totally different ball game. So, um, Asking the question which is best, I, let's look at another couple of kits before we make that judgment, shall we? Um, what I would say is you've got two kits in the same scale and doing two different things. Okay, that's it for this video. Um, I hope that gave you uh, an interesting insight into the Tamiya way of doing things if you've not built one of their large-scale aircraft kits before. Um, and give you uh, an understanding particularly of this um, Corsair kit which I have to say is lovely and if you want to build a Corsair um, probably this is the go-to kit um, if you can afford it um, it's an outstanding kit as we saw as we went through it um, yeah couldn't recommend that kit more okay thanks for watching stay safe everyone uh, and I hope to see you all soon
Hang on a minute. That's not where this kit ends. After the kit came out, Edward did exactly what they did with their kit and brought out a small amount of photo etch, which they call a big head. And that includes some die cut masks. Some pre painted seat belts. Some pre painted and non pre painted interior parts, including a replacement dashboard and wiring looms and bits and pieces for the inside. An engine detail set with all sorts of bits and pieces for the, the frames and the inside of the cowling and replacement cowling covers and lots and lots of detail in there and an exterior set which has more cabling um, brackets, hinges, interior detail um, And then when they'd done that, they brought out another etch set, which was placards. So, bits and more bits and pieces, primarily for the interior of the uh, cockpit. So, just in case you thought there wasn't quite enough detail in that Tamiya kit, you can really go to town with it if you wish. Now. Because there's only three options in the kit, some other aftermarket companies have come out with additional options for marking. Um, and these are vinyl masks. So rather than um, using decals on a 132 scale aircraft, you can use some paint masks, which infinitely will look better. And what you get, this is a Montex, you get typically two different versions in each set. You get interior and exterior vinyl masks for your canopy. You get all your markings. So your big stars that would be on the side of your aircraft and on the wings for both of these options gives you different paint options although they don't suggest a paint brand and you get a small decal sheet that accompanies them and I've got to say I really quite like Reluctant and I think that's what we'll end up doing so there you have it. Um, one thing Tamiya kit does is attract a lot of aftermarket attention because the aftermarket boys know that these kits sell well and therefore their aftermarket products are likely to sell well. Um, when you're doing a, a kit of that scale, being able to spray paint your major markings is definitely something that's handy if indeed you use an airbrush. Right, that's it for this review then. See you soon.